Mars is moving into the sign of Sagittarius from the 24th of November to January 4th, where he's going to help you achieve a little bit of inspired action in your life. He's an immutable sign. He's adaptable, flexible. Faith, hope, and optimism are his specialty, and it's a transit to look forward to every couple of years. So I'm going to talk about how this Mars Sagittarius warrior feisty energy will impact you. So please listen ahead for your rising sign, and you can also listen for your sun and moon. I'm going to very briefly talk about some world events connected to this Mars transit through Saturn. I mean, transit through Sagittarius, so get ready for that. It's a pretty quiet transit transit for his six weeks journey. He's only really activating three planets. He's having a square to Saturn, a trine to Chiron, and later on a conjunction with Mercury. So it's a very simple story. And we're going to go into the trine to Chiron because this is only happening four times during our current lifetime, not to be seen again till 2070. So I love the rarity of this story of Mars, who's allies with Chiron energetically in ancient history, in mythology indeed, trining or flowing with Chiron, it can offer you a not only inspired action, but healing. <laughs> so if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lori Lothian. I am the I am using the Western Tropical Zodiac. I love the whole sign house system. I love minor asteroids and I also use the fixed stars. I'm really trying to help you navigate your life with greater clarity and ease using the amazing tool of astrology. So let's get rolling and talk about Mars and the sign, the fire sign of Sagittarius. And just before I do delineate this whole thing, I'll be showing you the sky. I want to say one more thing. I forgot to say I've got a great little promotion in the month of December. So if you catch the wave of this in the late November, early December period, I'll be having a promotion to entire you to sign up for my uh, Patreon community. All the details are in the description box as well. My 2024 videos are now being released December 1st. You can pre-order for only $49. After that, it will be $77 and you won't receive that price again. So that's the pre-order price in the description box. Okay, so back to Mars and Sag. Okay, look, first of all, let me say one thing. I did another video. I recorded, I'm recorded. i recording on November 20th. I recorded this video a week ago for my Patreon community, early access ad free. And I talked about global situations to do with the word WAR. I talked in detail about the charts of nations and leaders involved in a current global escalated conflict. And I decided to pull it. What you're going to get today is my delineation of the trine to Chiron in the all signs portion and a new opening, which I'm giving you now. And why would Lori do that? Because there is unfortunately some algorithmic suppression going on. I've noticed when I don't mention anything to do with the war in PAL or ISR, you know, the, in the, I don't even want to spell it. Those videos are immediately upon release suppressed and I can see from the back end that's happening. So there's little bot bots that are wandering around suppressing content that are that is relevant to this particular situation in the world, probably for reasons that are, you know, to keep controversy out of the platform. So if you're interested in understanding the world events as it applies to some very intense actions connecting to several world leaders, the US world leader, world leaders in the Middle East, then you might want to check the description box below. And I've got an unlisted private link that you can go to for that more intense and very interesting, if not disturbing content, including the asteroid America traveling into uh, proximity to the Sagittarius Mars narrative. So I'm leaving that for you to go get on your own. Let's get rolling then and talk about some happier stories. Yay, it's all got to be happy on YouTube. Oh my God, happier stories. Hang on, got my notes here for you. Uh, let's not, God forbid, we talk about something gnarly that's happening, happening in the world. You know, that doesn't work, right? So I do have some stories I want to tell you about Mars. So number one, he's in a mutable sign. That means flexibility, adaptability, changeability, moving with the flow, changing your mind is okay, changing your direction. Mars is a god of action, direction. He's changeable here is willing to adapt. So you may be going into things during the six week, November 24th to January 4th transit that are very much about, you know, what action you want to take, what decisions you want to take, where do you want to direct your ambition and willpower, and you may change your mind or you may redirect. So don't be surprised if you do a little flexibility, a little gumby about your, your goals to achieve in your Sagittarius whole sign house, which is different for every single person here like that. That's my career mid heaven 11th house energy. So every one of you will have something different about how this Mars, Mars, Mars movement will appear, appear to you. Number two, 
basically mars is going to be trying to gin up a lot of enthusiasm inspiration hope sometimes a little warrior energy with a zealotry in nature it's a you know sad aims to be about truth and you can be a truth warrior sagittarius energy aims to be about um adventure and a lot of uh, mars energy is already adventurous so you may be orienting towards some greater adventure. And a lot of you know I'm traveling and I'm having a really hard time acquiring decent lighting on this trip, so I apologize for that. I'm working with windows in a house that is, you know, it's not my own. And um, so keep that in mind. I like the vibe. I like the vibe of Mars here. It really feels good. It doesn't feel good for world situations, but it feels good individually. And that's what matters, right? Because that's why we're watching our astrology on YouTube. Um, and first of all, when Mars comes into uh, this part of the sky, he's completing in the very beginning of this transit, really intense energy on the 24th, 5th, and 6th of the month, a square to Saturn. It's a last final square from the first con from a conjunction or a joining together of Mars and Saturn in April, April 5th of 2022. And that means that this is a completion finish line energy. And I'm having a special video coming out on just that for you um, around the 25th or 4th of the month. But this video today is just to alert you to that because things you started around April 5th or the month of April 2022 are now in the final stages of finish line, a completion and energy. Now, the world had a lot of events that occurred in April of that year, and those events were inceptions or beginnings of stories that are completing in this last quarter energy, indeed, until between now, right, November through to January, is completing those April things for the final end game of a new Saturn and Mars conjunction in the spring or April of 2024. So let me just give you some of the global headlines. I'm, you're going to be annoyed by me spelling a bit here because I do not want the algorithm to suppress me. This is not about the ongoing really bad conflict that the world is having. That's what's being suppressed. So rather, I'm going to tell you about some general ideas and stories that were very much in the headlines and explain how Mars works when he's with Saturn. Saturn is restriction and constraint and constraint and holding things back and regulating and rules and walls and dams and boundaries. And Mars is like gung ho, cut and sever, separate, charge ahead, warrior, feisty, you know, willpower, ambition drive. <laughs> so the two don't have a lot in common, right? <laughs> They're like, one is wanting to put the halt sign up and the other one wants to put, you know, the uh, race car driving uh, story into motion. So let's talk about just the headlines in brief. So I want you to be aware that you're going to see recapitulations or returns to stories that were in the news cycle in April of 22, coming back full strength now between November 24th and January the 4th. This is a final leg of a longer narrative. So in my handy notes that I wrote for just for us today, I want to talk about the idea that if if Saturn wants to regulate things, he's going to make a container or a control for it, which he tends to do. And so there was in April of 22, an Oklahoma court or legislation, an Oklahoma state of USA legislative success in passing a ban on abortion. Why abortion? Because Mars cuts, ends, and severs. And indeed, in the clients of charts, when they have had miscarriages or abortions, you'll see Mars action in a certain way. So the Oklahoma ban on abortion happened in 22. What is the new news stories that will come out about legislation on that matter? Now, there were two different narratives around the word um, W-A-R, crimes, and G-E-N-O-C-I-D-E, -E, okay? Those two things hit the headlines in April. Um, the International uh, Crimes Guides, the ICC, uh, International Criminal Court, uh, was in a uh, highlighting uh, results of an investigation into uh, W-A-R crimes in Darfur, in Sudan. And as well, we also saw that there was a uh, human rights group in April, indeed April 6th, like really close to that conjunction, um, that were accusing the Ethiopian forces of doing an E-T-H-N-I-C. Okay, I think you can say the word ethnic, and ethnic, and then think of the word when you're cleaning your house. <laughs> you know, ethnic blank, right? I'm not going to say those two words together. I'll be, I will be, I will be uh, botted out, and you won't see this video. So ethnic, like cleaning your house, okay? So basically, 
those stories, the two I just told you, were in the news cycle in April of 2022 when Mars and Saturn came together, and they will return to the mainstream narrative in a big way. Long COVID was interesting. That was when all this news story came out. The long COVID was really a thing. And why did I bring it up? Mars is the god of plagues and pandemics in the ancient tradition of Babylonian astrology. And Saturn is the word long, endurance, marathon, long plague, long inflammation, long disease. That's literally, that's a Mars conjunction to Saturn. Expect more news about longer lasting impacts of either the pandemic or even some of the pandemic measures. Um, A new study just did come out on the day of recording or was publicized um, recording November 20th about the long effects of a syndrome that came from post V-A-C-C-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. Okay, that's a medical study. So there we go again, long syndromes, long courses of hardship about illness and disease. So more news stories about that coming up in the next six weeks. And then uh, Biden announced a new gun re- legislation. He was uh, in the month of April saying, I'm going to announce something to do with gun legislation. Of course, Mars is the gun, the shooter. Saturn is the legislation. I'm just showing you how literal this is. And finally, the United Ukraine, Ukraine um, prosecutors um, were investigating 5,800 Russia WAR crimes. <laughs> So those words that I mentioned will be back big time in our news cycle. Okay, now we're going to talk about you. I just cannot not talk about world events. I'm just not that like pop psychology astrologer, guys. And if you don't like that kind of content from me, then that's okay. And if you're new to my channel and you do like it, I do try to cover it in a way that doesn't also damage my algorithm. So today was very much my attempt to not do that. It's literally weird to see on videos where I mentioned this current conflagration in a part of the world, how as soon as the video goes out, it drops completely down in terms of the likes and shares and not not only that, the the exposure, the YouTube recommendations and my latest Kazemi Mars video, which is really doing well, it's about 40,000 views right now, go check it out because it happened on the 17th, 18th, and it's resetting your life for two years. So please check that video out. It's a very important video about Mars Scorpio Kazemi that just happened. Um, and I didn't mention anything at all in that video about the global situation. And that's why that video was doing so well. So there is a, a covert censorship here already just, you know, on this platform. All right. So let's roll and let's talk about your sign. Well, I'm not going to talk about your sign. Why? Because I'm, st- I'm going to pe- append this to the other video and cut and splice up the old recording with a new intro. That's what we're doing. But I want to show you the sky. I think a lot of you want me to, I'm going to take you through and annotate the square to uh, Saturn, um, the trine to Chiron so you can see it, as well as later on, I'll be doing a special video on Mars conjunct Mercury around December 26, 27, 28. That's going to be rather important given what's been going on. And I'll do a whole video on that as well. Don't forget, you know, maybe I didn't mention this, but you know, Mars is a slow traveling planet. He takes two years to go around the zodiac and so because of that when we see mars trining chiron from the sign right of sagittarius fire to chiron's journey from 2019 to 26 through aries there are only four occasions in which that occurs january of 2020 december of 2021 late december december 15th of 2023 which is why we're doing this video today and december of 2025 and we won't see that combination of energy and again until 2070 therefore because chiron takes 50 years to go around the zodiac and mars two years and this is a synodic cycle involving a trine so know that the reason i think why i want to talk about this in the video ahead and we'll do another special video on it later on too is because it's going to close out a chapter in 2025 you're in the fourth iteration of this but you might want to try to think about january of 20 december 21 december 23 december 25 or where you're trying to heal something chironic in your Aries part of your sky, ready? And I, my, in the second half of this video that I'm gonna p- cobble together, I do a really light touch quickie on sharing what that's like for you. 
But I want you to think about subscribing and all that stuff because I'll do a deeper dive into the Mars Chiron Trine, whole video of its own, its own special video in the middle of December. And you'll get a lot more detail about the fine, finer details of this so fixed stars and asteroids that get involved in that particular story. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the sky and then we're gonna let, then you'll be into the all signs. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're one of my regulars that, and you're watching this with me in the live premiere, thanks for being here. Misbehaving LA Taylor, Serge LaBelle, Discerning Life, Light, Ashley Sending Light, uh, The Feral Writer, Purple Table Terror, Psychic Readings with Rose, Bold and Beautiful Tarot, and more. You guys are wonderful. Michael Thrash, Linda Calder, thank you for being part of my crew. These are people who I chat with in the live premiere. Almost every single video I put out, I, I, I engage in a conversation while we watch the replay together called Live Premiere in the chat box so I can get to know you, take your questions, find out what your experience of these kinds of skies are. It's a community I'm trying to create on a broadcast platform form so it's a bit tricky all right um let's get rolling and do the all uh the image of the sky and then the all signs okay guys here we go over to the image of the sky two-dimensional rendering of a three-dimensional reality and here it is so basically what i want to point out for everybody here is I want to share this is what I'm seeing right so I've got it set for an Aries rising and I'm going to annotate just for fun I love to scribble all over my thing there's Mars at 27 Scorpio on November 20th and we're not sticking with that I just want to see where he is now and he's going to be moving into the sign of Sagittarius we just had that Kazemi and it was at 20 exact around 25 degrees of the sign of Scorpio resetting your life for two years over the next two years, a big change in your Scorpio piece of real estate, not seen since 91, 2, and 3, those those time frames, follow 91 to 93. That's why listening to that All Signs video will be very useful for you. It's it's a long prediction story, not just about what happened last week. All right, so um, now I'm going to annotate because I didn't mean to actually start the annotation. Unfortunately, when I'm annotating, it doesn't let me fast forward the story. It's like uh, one thing or the other. You're annotating or you're moving the chart. It doesn't let me do both of them, which is really kind of weird. Um, so here we have it. There goes Mars into Sag. And you know, we'll see he's joining the sun. What I'm not showing you there is Asteroid America and the Asteroid series are there. But I cover that in the hidden video, the unlisted video uh, about some of the world situations in this ingress. And you can get that in the description box as an unlisted treat. And you can listen to that if you're inclined. But as Mars is moving through the sign of Sagittarius, you can see that he is going to be uh, also cohabitating with Mercury, who's out of dignity, by the way, and I cover that in my other videos as well. But well, that's a whole other story about Mercury being a confabulist, um, an embellisher, a liar, <laughs> telling things that are not necessarily true. So of course, in our new cycle, there's a lot of spin, a lot of pamphlet wars, a lot of doctoring of the facts, a lot of distrust in the stories that we're seeing. And that often happens when Mercury, the news guy, goes through the sign of Sagittarius. He's not really interested in the truth, Sag. He's interested in, well, here he's like confused about the truth. He's like, like he's a details guy, but everything's all super glowy for him and kind of a bit larger than life. And he, he takes orders from Jupiter, and Jupiter's busy in Taurus not paying much attention to him is called an aversion or an inconjunct so he has no supervision there now what i was t telling you is that this is here's the annotation portion of our, our story there is mars squaring saturn and that story saturn in pisces last seen 29 years ago is back hardship at hardship with water hardship in water uh, of course i go into more detail on a video just uh, dedicated to the square coming up probably on um probably on the 25th third or so of the month. So you might want to check that out. I'll probably get flagged algorithmically for that, but what can you do? But this is definitely uh, what was started, as I said, April 5th, 2022 is in its last quarter square. It's finishing up. Look for that new stories to uh, remind you of the stories I gave you already. And as Mars does move forward, he will come into the trine around December 15th to Chiron. Now he's not trining Chiron from here, but let's make it simple on me. There we go. That's a nice flow. The nature of Jupiter brings luck, opportunity, expansion, healing, and growth. And that's what we're going to cover in your all signs portion. Also, the North Node is here. I didn't draw it in, but the North Node is sitting here. And that is also rare. So unlike the other two iterations of this, in January of 2020, December of 21, and coming in December of 25, this is the first time that Chiron is with the North Node in your Aries real estate of your 12 pie slice natal sky, making this an exceptionally different and more intense and robust healing 
quality. Chiron can be healing a physical, mental, emotional issue, but Chiron can also be about leaning more deeply into your original medicine, the purpose for which you were born. Now, the last thing that will happen is that Mercury will still be here and Mars will catch up with him and conjunct him in the last part of December. Um, if I remember correctly, it's roughly around December 27th and 28th. That's going to be an explosive story, news, Mars, war, inflammation, fire, disruption, I don't know, plague, I don't know. But we'll see a news story that's very Mars and Sag blowing into our reality at that time. And I'll do a video on that as we get closer to it. So I hopefully enjoyed this annotation. Remember what we're doing here today is uh, cobbling together the back end of something I recorded like seven days ago for Patreon, adding it to the intro that's not going to get me flagged on this darn platform. I hope this is helpful for you guys. And you can, again, check out the um, hidden material below. I might almost have to start a separate channel that, from this one where in which I cover the more realistic mundane astrology not to get my channel uh, downgraded because this is my livelihood thanks for listening and hopefully you enjoy the next portion which is the movement of that trine through your sky december 15th offering up a very profound healing in your aries and sagittarius 12 of the 12 houses pieces of your sky based on your rising sign sun and moon use whole sign houses if you don't know what i mean please check my description box i not only have a free meanings of the 12 houses pdf you can download but i also have a small video tutorial about 10 minutes long teaching you how to use online software for free to cast your chart in whole sign houses a lot of you are accidentally using placidus which can be fine I don't like that system. I'm using the ancient one. But when you're listening to our YouTube astrology, all of us YouTubers are actually delineating as if you're on whole sign house systems, okay? So that you don't want to say half my house is Pisces and half my house is Aquarius. No, or whatever. You have one whole sign, one whole house. I'm an Aquarius rising. I have one whole Aquarius rising house. My ascendant floats in Aquarius mm -hmm, at 18 degrees. If I was using Placidus, it would probably be that I have my ascendant starting my first house at 18. And then I have, you know, going through actually my, because I was born in a high latitude, my Placidus is a S show. It's a nightmare, you know, where I have intercepted stuff. So you, you, if you're born in like a higher North latitude and an extreme seasonality, you could end up having like three signs wedged in one house. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me. Second of all, you can't really use um, the Placidus or Co Coker Campanus very effectively for using Time Lord tools and techniques of ancient astrology, which is another reason I don't prefer it. So uh, there you go. I'll do a whole video on, on why. I'll show you my chart, how my whole life changed as an astrologer when I went to whole sign. There's an old phrase I say, once you go whole sign, you never go back. And I have a lot of astrologers who now concur. All right. So I'm not a zealot but I am about whole sign houses. Enjoy the rest of this video, everybody. And don't forget, please like and subscribe. It does help my channel grow. Appreciating you guys. Take care. And recording on the 20th of November. This is probably going out on the 22nd. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, I got to stop the recording. So we're going to start with Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. Aries, you're going to experience this Mars transit through your ninth house. It happens every two years. This is where you get ambitious and excited about foreign lands and travel, uh, justice, higher, higher uh, education, academic environments, um, book publishing, uh, spirituality, faith and religion, etc. A lot of intense passion and excitement up here for you, for sure. But I love the healing energy that's coming up around the 15th of December when this trine happens to Chiron in your first house. This is really a big healing around something about your faith, about a sense of how you really belong in the world. You could even have a, a physical healing of some sort, almost like a miracle healing. But coming from the house of God is like hit your, hit lords and throw your crutches you know, out. Um, Mars up here can definitely be indicating you are traveling between November 24th and January 5th to foreign shores of foreign lands. And I tend to damn well get myself on a sunny beach somewhere. But you could also be fighting to win a court case. And I love the fact that the trine to the North Node and Chiron starting December 15th, add a couple of weeks when we add the North Node, in and things are looking your going your way and looking good for you as you can expect some success and victory in something that has to do with legal matters um, if you have any kind of um, 
religious belief uh, that you have been, you know, working with or spiritual path, this can amplify that and bring it into a sense of real connection to a deeper level of personal healing through faith, through uh, beliefs and through ideologies, but not necessarily in a crazy ass way. We do get Mercury out of Sagittarius, thank freaking God, where we have zealotry and righteousness and he gets out of there on, when does he leave? Oh, my notes. Mercury will leave Sagittarius on December 13th. So having Mercury out of Sag means that things to do with your spiritual beliefs and your your faith and all of that can be very true and very, very real. Okay. Moving on to the next sign. Again, this is a nice little quickie. It's meant to be pithy and entertaining, hopefully. I have to edit the chart, make it whole signs, so and rotate our sky into uh whole sign mode when we're looking at whole sign mode whole sign mode whole sign mode whole sign okay moving to taurus sun moon and rising let's get you on the screen this is pithy this is short oh it didn't work because i had it on days instead of hours in fact i can move this to the right day as well So we're talking around the 15th of December, just so you know, where it's most acute. But we'll just put it around, yeah, here. All right, and then we go Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising. There's a Mars trying Chiron energy going on here for you. Well, with a little bit later, a week later, uh, Mars hitting that north node. I'm still in Aries. (laughs) Guys, this is not my best recording. I apologize. It didn't hold when I changed the... It didn't hold when I edited the chart to whole signs because this is the glitchiest software. It never, ever holds. So let's edit it again. Let's move it again. I, this happens to me all the time with the software. I don't know why the developers haven't fixed it. Now it's got me in Scorpio land. All right. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is Lori going, yeah. Yeah. This is a story here for you of Mars moving through your eighth house of chunky money. Uh, this is resources you share with your partner. I keep saying it over every video. I'm getting tired of telling you, but it's credit cards, loans, um, <clears throat> inheritance monies. Certainly with Mars son here, inheritance money from Taurus for Tauruses can come through November 24th to January 5th from a father, father figure. That's very possible with this kind of sky. But also you may be looking at the idea of a lot of um, elimination of financial uh, excess that you know or really paring away and pruning some of your investments or your your strategies around taxes and really taking a lot of decisions and actions in that area but it flows to your 12th house your 12th house represents things to do with your own addictions and self undoing by the way that trying to chiron for a Taurus could be the end of a psychologically motivated self undoing or addiction and the finalizing of that out of your life for good for good. I do think that's very possible for a lot of Taurians suffering from that problem. And also, you know, you've got Jupiter in your first house. He rules the eighth house, watching energetically, uh, protecting Mars from doing any harm over there. So this can be some exciting and uh, really intense uh, uplifts or directional shifts in your longer term finances and your treasure chests of money. But in this case, or I'm sitting on a bed, in this case, it could also look like, again, some kind of bequeathment monies or inheritance monies from a family member, legacy wealth, father, father figure in play. Yes, between November 24th and January 5th. But you're healing things to do with your own self-worth, past life karma, addictions and self undoing, which looks really good on you. I'm going to pause the recording. I'll be right back. This girl needs just a bit of water and we shall continue the recording. <laughs> Look at the light. It's so weird. Um, I got this uh, a mug here because I'm staying in the house of a Delta pilot. It says um, probably reverse for you guys. I'm not sure. Maybe you can read that. It says pilot because badass miracle worker is not an official job title. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go back to the all signs and roll through the next one. Um, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is definitely looking, oh, my microphone. (laughs) I'm not even sure you guys can hear what I just said about the pilot thing. Okay, so 
Wow, there's construction upstairs where I normally record, plus the light was shining right, right on me, so I couldn't record up there. Okay, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. Mars is in your seventh house. Seventh house is your marriage house. This is a transit that's going to give you between November 24th and January 5th, either a lot of fighting with the one you're with, a lot of passion with the one you're with, a lot of change, a lot of momentum. Your person might be going through a lot of change, whether it's your significant love or marriage or business partnership, or even your audience. This is t good for trolls. I've had a, quite a few lately. I've progressed. Gemini Sun. So I guess I'll look at trolls uh, trolling me across the way in my audience marketplace seventh house, but I'm going to just deal with it without having a meltdown. People are nuts. And as this is going on, Mars through here, he's trining. I have a progressed Gemini Sun, right? I told you that. Mars is trining, trining Chiron around December 15th and a little bit later, a week later, hitting that North Node. So December 15th out a couple of weeks, you know, maybe four days before, you're having some kind of glow up in your 11th house. You're healing a friendship with uh, a, a, someone in your life. You're healing a, a, a sense of belonging to larger groups of belonging. You're really connecting or healing something with an elder sibling, particularly one above you. You may even be healing something to do with your longer term rain, goals, wishes, and dreams for your career path, your life in general, and your purpose. This is a positive sense of good healing regarding also a sense of um, what you would wish your life to look like and maybe having some kind of new momentum there. Possibly Mars in the seventh house is some actions and directions that your partner is taking in life, business or love, that are also supporting you in your own finances, especially if it's to support you in the gains you're making from your career and to heal any feeling of deficit in the way your career is outpictured in financial gains. Like your partner gets a job and now all your money gains aren't the only gains that matter, for example. Watch for conflict, though, because Mars Mars over here, especially with the sun, which is setting, can lead to some really sharp words or sharp conversations, especially until Mercury gets out of there around December 15th. Really sharp words and conversations that could be regrettable. Uh, December 13th, Mars will leave, and so you won't have some kind of bombastic, sharp conversations that, you know, completely kibosh your re reality. And um, let me double check the date of Mars leave taking because I don't believe I got that right either because, okay, my notes are really bad today. Yeah, Mars, when the heck do you get out of Sag? Come on, show me your stuff. Yeah, Mars is leaving Sag on December 1st. So there you go. So we want to say Mars is no longer, Mercury, I mean, it's no longer causing trouble here, which is wonderful. Anything else? Hmm. You can break agreements. You or somebody else can break legal agreements or any kind of agreement with Mars here, but that agreement has a healing afterglow and it leads to a greater sense of uh, karmic rewards and goodness, especially in your finances as they come from career. So if you have a legal agreement around a career, um, a career condition or a work condition and you might want to break it, it will work in your behalf. It will work towards you to quit and break rather than keep and stay, okay? Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign. This is really cool. This is going to be like a, 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 a nice angular energy here. Not angular. <laughs> a nice intense fire energy here in your workhouse. Um, you're passionately pursuing something in your work between November 24th and January um, the 5th, and you may be putting all of your effort into it because Mars is in the house of his joy. You may also have uh, quitting your job or somebody in your job place quits or workplace quits, or if you're a boss, you may fire someone. But again, the good news is that trying to Chiron in the middle of December around the 15th and then a little bit later, the trying to the North Node, things that are changing ending severing in the work and career space house work house workplace house workaday routines again really amplify some sense of deeper purpose in your career and some kind of a, a th authentic sense of expansion as you move into a healing and more on on target purpose in your career path of course watch for mars here in the house of pets for injuries or if difficulties or with the health of pets, for your own health, it's best for you to exercise when Mars is here, especially in a fire sign, get yourself jogging or doing some kind of real movement forward. But he also can cause some inflammation, especially rashes, so be careful for that. But normally when he's here, he's in the house of his joy. He's trying to help you improve your health and really kick some butt in your work environment. 
All right, Leo, sun, moon, and rising. This is a story where Mars is moving through your fifth house of children and love and romance from November 24th to January 5th. It's really good for creative projects and entrepreneurial endeavors as well. You're full of chutzpah, chutzpah, go, go, go. It trines you. You feel good about this time of year, this type of Martian activity. Mars, however, is also going to come into a trine to Chiron and the North Node in your house of foreign shores and travel. And because Mars likes to travel and leisure travel is fifth house, it looks like some Leos are going to pick up an opportunity for some travel, maybe to a foreign country, leisure travel, part of your destiny, young Skywalker. We can see that more true in December, especially around the 15th at a couple of weeks. Now, also, you heal some a religious belief or faith or ideology that has been stuck for you and you may heal it in a way because you're tapping into authentic joy authentic enjoyment and the soul spark of what brings you enlivenment and life force energy so there's that mars here can be competitive and you may be very competitive and if you need to win a court case to compete against the opposing party then you could win your court case in december 15th add two weeks okay um i like the healing of the court matter if that's that's something you need. Certainly, Mars here in the fifth house can all can be a child will move out of the home uh, between November 24th or January 5th, or you may sever contact with a child. Watch for arguments with a child. I already talked about the gnarly Neptune bit with Mercury in another video. There's some definite difficult conversations with children, perhaps uh, regarding money. All right. All right. All right. Um, it is very short, guys. I need my Negroni. It's a witching hour. <laughs> it's getting like the sun is setting and this girl has been working all day. I need to find I need to find a, a, a pacing here where I get more exercise. All right, Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign. What is happening is you have the movement of Mars through your fourth house of home, property, land, and real estate. This can definitely look like arguing in the home between January, November 24th and January 5th, but it can also look like construction in the home, hammers, nails, and sharp objects. So are you doing some renovations, uh, Virgo? You could also be moving your home. So be careful for that. I mean, you can want to move your home. Great. If you don't want to move your home, watch out for fights with people you live with and have propel you to change where you live. <laughs> Mercury is doing the same problematic thing before Mars gets into the mix. What I do like, however, is around December 15th that Mars is coming into a beautiful flow to your house of chunky money, allowing you to get some money from your, your partner in business, your marriage type partner, inheritance monies. you got to flow to heal and expand some kinds of chunks, chunks of money that support you in the word home property land and real estate however mars conjunct the sun severing a pater patrilineal figure is in a trine to the north node in the house of inheritance that can mean some patrilineal lineage inheritance money showing up for you are you surprised that would probably be your best question probably not you may be expecting this but it may also still be sudden mars sun energy can be abrupt okay um that's about it we're this is one of the shortest videos i've ever done <laughs> but it's also accurate and laser precise libra sun moon and rising sign mars is moving through your third house and this is a house of travel he loves to travel and the commuting and trains and planes and automobiles you're going places a lot of you libras are on the road or you're in journey mode november 24th to january 5th and you're probably enjoying that you may also have some harsh cutoff conversations or difficulties with a sibling particularly a younger sibling more a cousin or fights with your neighbor be careful for that november 24th to january 5th but what I'm seeing here around December the 15th is I'm seeing the flow to the North Node Chiron in the house of significant business and marriage partners. This could be traveling with a marriage type partner. It could be securing a new contract for business, especially if you want to work for something in your local environment or a new job in the online world. Mars in the uh, third house is passionate about your online social media presence, your websites, your writing projects, and your communications. If you're a marketer seller, it can really up level your performance. You may get new contracts, new agreements, and new partners in business as a result of this intense but very feisty positive energy mid-December at two weeks. But I do see the potential of either planning or taking a trip with someone significant in your life, like your marriage type partner, especially around the middle of December at two weeks. 
Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is your Lord Mars in the second house of money and earnings. And he's helping you rustle up some significant passion and aggression and self-starter energy to bust your butt financially and make more money than you normally do. November 24th to January 5th. He does like to spend money and you may also spend some more money, but he's got a self-starter modality here and you can really find new ways to make money as well. Your speech may be hard and you may also do some dermabrasion, laser treatments or surgery on your face or your teeth uh, during this time or just get a filling fill during this time. Maybe a lot of jaw or teeth work with Mars with his <clears throat> polishing and cutting and filling type energies. Um, November 24th to January 25th though, uh, Mars finally also says speak strongly, passionately about what you care about. Let your voice ring true and strong from your soul energy. As Mars comes into a trine to December the 15th, add a couple of weeks and we embed the North Node as well to Chiron in your sixth house of work, getting a raise, getting a promotion, healing some kind of feeling like you don't belong in the, the workplace that you're in, uh, bringing you into alignment with your truest purpose, gifts and talents as it applies to work. Okay, feels really good to me if that's what you're looking for. Finally, you could leave a job if you don't like it, especially if your midheaven is in uh, Virgo and whole sign houses, it can float. That would be Mars squaring the midheaven and telling you to cut the hell out of a job you don't want, time to quit. If you have a midheaven in Leo though, you're just going to love your job more and do very well financially. Sagittarius, this is all happening in your sign. You've got that Mars transit every two years, this time November 24th to January 5th. You are very focused. You are very aggressive. You are very decisive. You are very action hero oriented. You also have to watch for injuries, rashes, inflammation to your body as Mars transits the house of your body. So be more cautious than usual because you could overheat here. Now, Mars is also making you directional. You're going to know what directions you want to take. If you're thinking about anything, change of career, change of job, change of relationship, Mars is helping you make those decisions and be very focused and very optimistic and hopeful about your life in general. Because there will be a trine mid-December, add two weeks to Chiron in the fifth house, positive developments are happening through your choices, actions, and decisions with your romantic life, with your children, with fertility, with your independent business enterprise, with things that you're doing creatively. You're on fire here. It looks really like you could like take off and have some significant sense of healing around unfulfilled developments with fertility, pregnancy, children, and projects of creativity or entrepreneurship. If you were looking for love and haven't found it, December 15th at a couple of weeks and you could find a really feisty and fun romance and you're the one taking the action to make it happen. You're not afraid to be the one to ask the person out. <laughs> you're going to go for it. Would it be online dating? Who knows? Probably not. Probably not based on this chart. Maybe you could meet this person because you are traveling because the sun is in Sag with uh, Mars and by the way, especially in December, you know, sun rules foreign shores and travel. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign, Mars, who exalts you, by the way, is in your 12th house, really good for foreign lands, foreign shores, uh, backroom deals and negotiations, revenue and income and, and financial uh, work prosperity from foreigners and foreign countries. Certainly, November the 24th to January 5th, you may be traveling abroad, and you also may be communicating, especially um, uh, in the beginning when Mercury is still there until about... Um, December 1st, a lot of communication between November 23rd or emails or phone calls with somebody who, in a, who lives or is connected to international foreign lands, foreign shores, or foreign countries. Capricorn, you also will see, though, that Mars can help you cut away, eliminate, and kibosh any bad habits, addictions, and pa self-defeating patterns. Watch for a male figure in a hospital, though, especially closer to mid-December with that Sun-Mars combination that can look like a male that you know in a hospital setting. And that's kind of truth of the whole transit really uh, until about December 21st. Um, with this transit trining Chiron in the fourth house of home real estate, you have a Chironic wound since 2019 Capricorn about not belonging, not finding a home, not knowing your true home, feeling, you know, somehow unconnected to your roots. 
and now this trine or your family of origin has been a place of wounding and now this trine is healing that in a very beautiful way you're feeling a sense of, with the north node of a completion and a destined sense of moving in a direction of your truest home or some homecoming energy some belonging connected to home healing in the home on and on we go so it can be a, a new homecoming or a, like coming towards finding a new home or just healing some deeper psychological childhood wounds that needed to be dealt with and that have been under the surface of your conscious mind. And that's very true December the 15th at two weeks. Certainly Rahu means foreigner. He's in the house of home. So homeland may be traveling to a foreign country, maybe making a foreign country your homeland. <laughs> very many different possibilities for you Capricorns here. And Aquarius, I am one of you. We have that Mars transit between November 24th and January 5th in our 11th house of good spirit. Mars up here can help us refine, pair away, cut away from groups of belonging and friendships that we no longer want to be a part of. But at the same time, he can make us very passionate and excited and full of vim and vigor about our dreams, hopes, and wishes for our life. We'd be re renewing our five-year plan. Mars up here can also be uh, some kind of disagreement with an elder sibling and that can be um, something that needs to happen in order to renew some sort, sort of vitality that you have about your life. Mars is in the house of great gains and so you know particularly from your career and so you may be experiencing some increase in your finances from your career november 24th to january 5th that's also quite possible but mars brings it on because you're taking passionate actions and you're relying on people who are benefactors and allies to support you particularly solar figures particularly males or people in power when that trine happens December 15th at a week or two with the North No getting bundled in, then you're looking at a deeper healing in your third house of younger sibling, cousins, and local neighborhood trips and travel journeys, skills-based education, websites, online platforms, and communication. If you are an Aquarius who have felt a chironic wound with a younger sibling, a chironic wound with your neighborhood situations since 2019, I put my hand up, I'm moving too many times, and I really haven't found the neighborhood for me since 2019. I've been changing homes up quite a bit and um, so you know kind of a healing of the, the energy of finding the right hood the neighborhood the place that you feel good about the general local environs you could also heal some wounds around travel you've been feeling wounded there and you get uh, some, some healing trips and travel in certainly Chiron here would offer very powerful healing as well when it comes to anything to do with the word writing this is a writing house and so if you've been stuck on your writing projects like I have and this is a healing on that front as well because it's happening from the house of your karmic rewards and your pennies from heaven and your great gains Mars is doing his best up here to if he heals a, a third house matter to do do you well i mean it can bring you greater influence financial gain it can bring you a greater sense of deep satisfaction in the wishes dreams and goals you have for your life okay moving to the last and you may visit a sibling literally travel to visit a sibling november 24th <laughs> to january because i was an aquarius rising i'm going to go visit my sister who lives in ohio because i live in, i'm spending time in atlanta so that just encompasses my journey trips and travel to see a sibling i was thinking christmas time and it's a very healing journey or trip for her for me whatever oh oh and then first and always first best and always first most amazing and always amazing is pisces all right pisces sun moon and rising sign this is going to be the movement of mars through your 10th house it happens every couple of years november 24th to january 5th he's all full of fire and passion and he can up level your uh you know enthusiasm and your uh will willpower and determination to succeed in your career path but it can also be about endings because he cuts severs and ends and so some of you may find yourself leaving a job quitting a job those kinds of things or big changes in the job story job career story mars up here though is also uh, connecting to the sun so solar figures can be involved in big career momentum for you those are usually men or people of authority and power and mars exalts you though so you have a special oh sorry you're pisces i'm right where i was so mars here is going to try and chiron in the earnings house you've had a chironic wound around your money situation particularly the ability to generate revenue or earnings probably a bit, well since 2019 according to this guy um, some kind of wound has been building here clearing up by 2026 but in the meantime this is a big, really nice touch december 15th add two weeks to amplify uh, heal restore 
uh, some destined healing of the chironic wound in the house of face, the house of speech, the house of earnings, the house of money. Um, and it does pertain to your reputation and career in in particular with Mars at the top of the sky. So we're not just talking about, say, oh, a lottery win necessarily, you know? Um, hmm. With the North Node in your second house anyway, you're going to increase your financial resources over the next couple of years until literally spring of 25. So this is a foregone conclusion, but this is one pit stop along the way. So what actions, decisions, and choices are you making around your career that will increase your financial gain? Yes, November 24th to January 5th, but with a particular attention around December 14th, 15th, 13th, 14th, 15th at you know, two weeks. Okay. So let me know guys how that goes for each of you. I've lost the light. <laughs> it's the end of the day. Thank you for like, liking, subscribing, hit the bell for notifications. I forgot to remind you the whole video, check my description box below the, is a more button for everything I have to offer. I've got so much going on down there. Go check it out. You know, discounts, specials, codes, everything. Go look below in my description box. I'm going to go have a Negroni hour, maybe pretend to do some exercise. <laughs> All right. And I'll see you guys in the next video, uh, which will be about, um, well, probably the 2020 D December 24, all signs videos for the month are coming up next in my lineup of material. Uh, that seems about right, but also we got uh, Venus moving into a new sign as well. Scorpio. So we'll be covering that as well in early December. Ciao, ciao.